Hey there everyone, I'm Kyle Shepard with the Louisville Zoo. Welcome to Creature Feature. I will be behind the camera taking your questions, so please type in your questions as we go along for Mr. Fred Hoagland, our, one of our educators here. We've got Gordo, our domestic ferret. We'll be talking today about him and about our black footed ferret program. Uh, and show us some love, send us a like, and um, if you're able, please consider a gift to louisvillezoo.org slash together, and, and you'll see all that information at the bottom of your screen. I'm gonna turn it over to Fred and Gordo. All right, working on that social distancing. That was well, that was well done, it was a good transition. Well, I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna get Mr. Gordo out. We know who the star of this, he's coming out with this whole paper in there. We know who the star of the show is. This is Mr. Gordo. He is a domestic, flat, black, uh, domestic ferret that comes to us. He is, oh, he's doing a little lick. He is, his birthday was February 11th of last year. So he's just over a year old. And he has, sometimes, is a little bit hard to hold on to because you can see that body is really flexible. He's gonna check things out. So that is Mr. Gordo, the domestic ferret. And he's with us down in the Meta Zoo. And that is where we do our education animals. So he's one that we sometimes get out for our education programs for people to be able to actually touch through there. And what doesn't come through the screen is the smell of Mr. <laughs> Gordo. He is one of the, in the sort of the weasel family through there. Some people think he's like a rodent, but he is not a rodent. If you get his little teeth in there, I'm gonna see if I can, well, he's not gonna let me do it right now. He has really sharp little teeth because he is a predator. He is a carnivore. And we're gonna get him, should I give him a little, little front through there? You can really see his little face. He's got that sable coloration. And we're gonna use him, one of the things that we do, we talk about one of the most endangered species in all of North America. And he is a distant cousin of that. And that is our black-footed ferret. But because they are so endangered, you know, we're not getting out and handling them at all. Uh, but this domestic ferret, these do not occur in the wild. These guys are domestic. They were probably, I think the jury's still out of whether they came from sort of Northern Africa or uh, Europe, somewhere around over in there. Uh, but they were domesticated a long time ago. And there's, they've been used as a sort of symbiosis with people for quite a long time. Oh, what do you think there? Oh, he's spending like a little lick. He's a licker. <laughs> So that is Mr. Gordo. For those of you just joining us, this is Mr. Gordo. He's our, well, he's our domestic ferret, and he is just over a year old, and he weighs 1,100 grams. <laughs> <laughs> so that, if you can make the conversion, there's a good math lesson there. See if you can make the conversion to the to the uh, imperial system there. How many pounds is 1,100 grams? Ooh, that'll, I'll let you get started on that. He's, he wants to get down right through there. He's, in, he's a tricky one to hold on to. And if you could see what this represents, and we're gonna talk about the black-footed ferret story here pretty soon. Uh, and I think that's one of, it's one of my favorite things to talk about because we don't get to talk about it a lot through here. There's some signage if you've been to the Louisville Zoo. Uh, that you can learn about it or if you've done your own research you might be able to learn about it but um, we have a really amazing program run by Guy Graves here at the Louisville Zoo that most people don't even know what the problem was. Who would have known that the black-footed ferret was having some troubles? Where, where are you hey, trying Fred? to go? Yeah. Hey Fred, I'm gonna pop up a picture of a black-footed sure, ferret. Sure, do since that. We're talking about Yeah, right? Is he on there already? He's on there. He's All really right. cute. I, I love that little stick em up mask that they've got on there. That's my favorite. And Gordo has a little bit of that. But this is the black-footed ferret. So this is one of the one of the most endangered species in all of North America. That's It's got to be up there. In fact, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story of those guys. Uh, are you back to me or are you still I will be. Yes, <laughs> let me get back to you there. You don't have to. I, we're back to Mr. Gordo here. I always <laughs> like to give him a little close-up so we can see what he's doing there too. There's Mr. Gordo. Well, back to you and Gordo. And you can see that really long slender body. He kind of slinkies up a little bit. He can go right down in those little burrows in through there. And I think the domestic ferret 
I believe uh, electricians used to use them to be able to go down and take wires into little holes that were inaccessible to humans to be able to get through there, but he could slip right through there. That was one that was in there too. Hey, you Mr. Have a Fred, question? we've got a few questions coming sure. in. I forgot to explain earlier that we have a little bit of a lag, so give us a little bit of patience on your questions. We'll get to them, we promise. Mm -hmm. um, they're coming in, and yep. it's sometimes a little bit of a lag, but Michelle Stubblefield would like to know how they're able to flatten themselves out. Hi, Michelle. How's it going? Well, look at that little body. He's got that really kind of tubular body. He's not going to be able to run very fast, but he can slinky right on through there. So his head... And if you were to put up your hand about like that, that usually about covers your head. So you can fit in a space that big. Well, look at his head right there. He can fit into some small spaces right in through there. And he goes right down into those burrows right through there. And the black-footed ferret, they like to eat things like prairie dogs. That's one of their favorite things. So if you know anything about the prairie dogs, you know that they build these big tunnels out through there in the kind of western part, like you think South Dakota, the plains out through there, eastern Wyoming, uh, North Dakota, Kansas. If you've ever driven across Kansas, you know what that's like. Right and flat. And they build these little sort of tunnels system out through there. And these guys like to eat the prairie dogs. Prairie dogs can actually be bigger than these guys sometimes. This is a black-footed ferret again mm -hmm. when I'm referencing to that. This is our domestic ferret. Kind of think of him as a distant cousin to the black-footed ferret. That's what is a, we're able to show you here because we're not going to get out through there. And he's, he's a handful to hold. He's slippery through there. He likes to move in and out. Hey, Fred, why don't you mm -hmm. tell everybody why we're showing a domestic ferret to represent the black-footed ferrets? Sure. So the, the black-footed ferrets that we've had there, Kyle had a little picture of him up through there before. I'll pop another one up right now. That is one of the most endangered species in all of North America. Uh, and I'll give you the story here in a little bit too of how endangered they were. In fact, they thought they were extinct for a number of years. They thought, that's it, there's no more left. Uh, so, we have a whole program. <laughs> he likes to get right in there. I'm, I'm still showing the black footed ferret. Right oh, now. <laughs> good. So, we have all, because Cortez, he's the one to get back to seeing what's under my shirt, my shirt sleeve there. Uh, they are super endangered and we take the utmost care to make sure that we're, they're not exposed to any diseases or anything like that if somebody were to come in. Uh, so we don't handle those. Uh, there's only a, a couple of folks on, on, our, uh, on zoo grounds here that does that uh, and we try to limit that excess. So in order to tell the story, we have this domestic ferret Gordo, this just over a one year old uh, domestic ferret. And these are, you know, quite common to be able to see. You can find them all throughout the world. People have used these guys as pets. And they kind of be, can be a tough pet sometimes because they're nocturnal. They come out at nighttime. So they are up when you're asleep a lot of times, making a lot of noise. Yeah. Well, we you have, have a few question? questions. Sure. Um, Allie, see. it's either Allie or Ollie, excuse mm -hmm. me, she's six, he or she's six, all right. from Indiana, wants to know where we got Gorda from. All right, that's a, that's a thank you, Allie, for your question there. We got Gordo from our docents. Our docents are, uh, 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 I, I call them a family of volunteers that come up through here. They go through a whole program and they come out and do educational outreaches. They'll do interpretation on, they do so many things. So, I mean, we couldn't do half the stuff we do without our wonderful volunteers that come up through here. And they actually donated Gordo to us for our education purposes. So we could teach about the Blackfoot Affair through there. He hey, we're going to shout that. out happy birthday to James. Oh, James' birthday? Yes, happy All birthday, right. James. Does anybody have a February 11th birthday? That You'd share a, a birthday with Gordo. He's ready to go down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's get back to that. I think we should... Is there another question on there? Or do we want to go back There's, to the Blackfoot Affair? No questions just yet. All right. So the black-footed ferret, that was a crazy one. Ooh. Oh, do we, I also wanted to make sure we got the, the pounds that he weighs. Because oh. you can see me holding it here. We said 1,100 grams. So in pounds, if you did the math, or if you need to push pause and be able to go through it there, that is 2.4 pounds. So wow. he's not very heavy. 2.4, that's why I can hold him up through there too. But he is active, so you can see he can be a little tricky to be able to hold on to right through there. <laughs> I do have a question. Yeah. 
Aiden wants to know, are there albino ferrets? There are. You'll sometimes see that. There have been albino ferrets for sure. Uh, there's another popular coloration. This is called a sable coloration. This is probably the most common. We have another, his sister, I think is a sister. Uh, we have Emma also in the, in the Meta Zoo. And she has a champagne color. And she's a really light color, light white too. Almost looks a, a bit of a white. I'm going to give you another look at his ah, little face right Gordo. through there. there That's Mr. Gordo through there. All right. So here's the story. Are you ready for the Black Footed Fair? Let me pop up a picture of those cuties. Yeah. Hang on. Go ahead. All right. Here's a cutie right here. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to take you back to 1979. Oh my gosh. There was what was thought to be the last sir, little, little group, little colony of black-footed ferrets, and researchers were looking at them in South Dakota. And what happens sometimes within the prairie dog, what they like to eat, and inside of the, the ferret populations, um, is that you can get a little bit of of disease. I'm gonna put him in for a second. Sure. But oh, we've got the picture up there. Yeah. Getting back out. Good. So there can be a little bit of disease that goes through there. They're susceptible to distemper and a few other things. They have predators too, just like a lot of other animals, uh, golden eagles and coyotes. Probably owls could could get a hold of a of a black-footed ferret, um, especially since they're nocturnal out at night. And the researchers that were looking at this last colony in South Dakota, disease hit them as well, and they couldn't, they couldn't be saved. They, they, were, they, were, they died out. And so that was it. They were declared extinct. They thought that was, no one knew of any other ones left in all of North America where they, where they come from. And to give you some perspective, there used to be a population of about 500,000 uh, or more uh, all across the United States West. Uh, and they had found it, this last colony, and then it was no longer. But then a few years later, in 1981, out in Wyoming, on a, on a ranch there, uh, one of the rancher's dog had, uh, had picked one up and brought it in. And the, the rancher that had it took it into Fish and Wildlife, and everybody was like, whoa, what's going on here? This is the, this is the black-footed ferret. This is the one that we thought was extinct. So everybody was excited, and they started looking at this other, this next the only colony that anyone knew of. Um, and again, a few years later, disease took over again. And so they watched those numbers. I can't remember the, the number that they started with when they found them, probably in the 40s or 50s. I might be off on that. But they started dwindling down and it got all the way down to 18 individual black-footed ferrets. That was it. That was all that was left. So that's when, um, groups stepped in to sort of start a breeding program. They thought if we we're gonna save it, we we're gonna have to step in and do it. And uh, one of six uh, institutions that were breeding this program was here in Louisville. Uh, we still have a facility. It's kind of uh, in the back. Uh, you can't really go to it by the public. Again, just keeping them as safe as we can and, and uh, uh, as protected as we can, the, the best we can. So they have that facility back there, Guy Graves. Uh, has been doing that for a long time. Pam does it as well. Uh, and they started bringing them back. And so they started reproducing that. They have about one to six, the little ones are called kits, every year. Um, so we're usually around May or June, so we're getting ready to come into kit season here. Um, and they started reproducing them. They got over a thousand over the years now that have been uh, bred here in the Louisville Zoo and uh, probably over 700 or so have been reintroduced into the into uh, sort of prime habitat there in the western United States. So you're talking about states like Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, uh, you've got Colorado, New Mexico. So these are private lands and some public lands that people want to be able to uh, reintroduce this species into the ecosystem. A healthy ecosystem has, uh, this is part of that balanced ecosystem, and so they invited them onto their land. Uh, they needed a, a healthy population of prairie dogs on there. That's their favorite thing to eat. So they might eat a squirrel or two, they might catch a my, mouse if they can get a hold of it, but uh, there might be a few other things, but mainly, I, you know, the vast majority of what they eat are prairie dogs. They're those little ones, too. I think he's scratching again. I'm All not getting right, it. All right, let's just... <laughs>
He's ready. When you're ready, I'll what pop you guys see in. in there? We do have a few questions about Gordo. Yeah. Um, I'm going to... Michelle wants to know... I'll, I'll give you a couple. Michelle okay. wants to know how long they, they get. Mm -hmm. And uh, Harvey would like to know who are their predators. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. Are you back to me? I am back to you. So Gordo's about that long. <laughs> <laughs> you can see about the length of my arm. So he's full grown. He's not going to get any much bigger than that. They don't live super long. If a if, uh, domestic ferret lives, lives to be about seven or eight years old, that's about uh, what you can expect. It's what the, you can hope for to be able to get to seven or eight through there. You can see he's, he's very active. He likes to try to move around. There's so much fun. We have this big, we call it the mirror, the exercise space, and you put all the little toys in through there and they go nuts. They're going through all the tubes and jumping up. They're super entertaining to, to watch play, especially him and his sister Emma. They like to to get after it too. Some of their predators, uh, probably one of the bigger ones is uh, the probably golden eagle. Uh, they can swoop down from them. These guys are, are mainly solitary. They kind of move about themselves. Unless the mother's with her kits there, she might be able to have it. So they like to live by their own. An owl at nighttime when they're most active. These guys have something in common with a lion, which I wasn't sure if anybody could get that part. They might sleep the Blackfoot Affair might sleep about 21 hours in a day. That's kind of like me in quarantine sometimes. Wow. I sleep I sleep a long time one of my days off to recuperate. So they, you know, three or four hours is all they need to come out and try to get one of their uh, prairie dog snacks to be able to, to make it through. Um, uh, what else would be a predator? Coyote for sure. The coyote would come across them. Uh, but they're pretty good. They can slip down into those burrows of um, those prairie dogs and that's what uh, is a good protection for them too. Not many things can get down in there and get them. Prairie dogs was one of the reasons why they their population plummeted too. Uh, prairie dogs are pretty destructive to fields and you think of ranch land with horses and cattle if they're walking around and they have a, a bunch of uh, holes in the ground. You can imagine what that would cause for uh, he, he gets a hold of his of his claws in there. He's got a good claws. He can dig around through there too. Uh, if something happens and so ranchers and stuff they, they weren't too kindly to prairie dogs being on their land so that was a practice that they would exterminate them and if that was their main source of food well look at that face he's ready to look now. If that was their main source of food and that was being decimated as well you can imagine you know the unintended consequence of a ferret being able to do that as well oh, I know. so michelle has another question about sure. do they hibernate do. <laughs> uh, you wanna <laughs> these guys don't do very well in heat so that's part of the reason why they they're not very heat tolerant so anything above 85 degrees so that's really where they they struggle with They'll grow their coat in the winter time. They'll go through there and get a thicker coat. They'll get a thinner coat in the winter time. Oh, here's a good question. I'll come back to do it as you go. See if you can name other animals in the same family as Gordo. Ooh. Meanwhile, I have another question. Oh, okay. Um, Josie, who is seven, wants to know if lions predator if are lions predators of ferrets. <laughs> Uh, if they lived in the same place, I bet they they might try, although this is a pretty measly smack for a lion. <coughs> Lions are an African animal. These guys, uh, this is the domestic ferret. Again, I'm talking of the... <laughs> Once he gets his claws on that shirt, he's, he's got... You got you want to let go of that? I'm going to take a minute to explain what's behind Fred, too. If you guys are seeing <laughs> oh, some yeah. tables full of uh, colorful um, things, those are our transformation entries from this year, which is our student art contest. And uh, of course we uh, closed for the COVID-19 response before we could announce those winners. And so they're still on display here at Zoo Vision and that's what you're seeing. I just wanted to give a little heads up about that because it looks a little weird back there. Yeah. So this guy represents the Blackfooted Ferret, which is the North America's only um, ferret. So they live here in the United States. Okay, got some questions. All There's right. some guesses coming in about right. the family. Oh, right. So Sarah says a weasel or a badger. 
Michelle says guinea pig. Jacqueline or Jacelyn says are weasels related. Oh yeah, that is a good one. Yep, they, weasels are, and that's a good one. Uh, guinea pig is going to get into that sort of rodent area. These guys are carnivores. They have the big canines on the teeth, and they're good predators for that. Uh, I mentioned one earlier. It has that little strong <laughs> smell to it, and that's what other people that are pets can attest to it. They can really have a strong smell. A lot of people that have these domestic ferrets as pets have those scent glands removed because they can't spray on stuff. And if you know one of the other parts of their family that does a little spraying around here, that is going to be the skunk. <laughs> There's a couple more that you might not be familiar with as much. Uh, Martin is one. Uh, a mink is another. Badger, I think somebody mentioned a badger. Yeah. Do you have another? Do you have an... Sarah's a snoot. A snoot. I don't know what a snoot is. <laughs> a snoot. That, my dad used to talk about the snoot that was a nose, but well, I'll have to look that one up. I'm not sure what the snoot is. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, there's one that I've ne always wanted to see. It's bigger cousin, probably the biggest one of this family. Uh, uh, I've lived in Alaska for a number of years, and I always want to see it. I found tracks of its relative, another species that's in the same family as the, as the black-footed ferret. Um, kind of has a mean disposition, and if you're a Michigan fan, you might know what it is. Think of the Michigan University mascot. That'll, that'll mean, tell you what it is. Yep. Meanwhile, Jared says warthog. Yeah, warthog is not. No, that's the African one. That's a good guess. But we're think of minks, martins, weasels, things like that that are down through there. Finally, he's kind of resting a little bit. I'll try to support his <laughs> little back end. And the other one was the Wolverine. That was the big one that I've been trying to find for a long time, but they're tricky. All right, I think, thank you for joining us so much today. I think Gordo's ready to join Emma back in the Meta Zoo and do a little bit more playing down there. That's what he does every day. He loves to get out and exercise and go through all the little tunnels we've got through there and, and do it. We hope you've enjoyed your time and that you're coming through here. I'm going to let Kyle come back on and finish this up and sign us off. Thanks so much for joining us today. And here is Kyle. We'll say bye one more time to Gordo there. He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thanks so much for joining us. Remember, we're live here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 2. And then on the Lift Up Louisville page at 11 on Thursday. So please join us there. Uh, and then Friday, of course, we'll be bringing you uh, Fitz Friday, of course. And don't forget to visit us at louisvillezoo.org slash together. Don't forget to social distance. Don't forget to wash your hands. We miss you, and we'll see you soon, hopefully.